Hi everybody, Andrew Enders Golf Academy. Thanks as always for watching, thanks for tuning in, pleasure to have you with me today. Topic of conversation today is this strange looking contraption in front of me. This is a loft and lie machine. Quite a few people have been asking me about loft and lie machines and how they work, why we use them, what's their purpose. So, let's just first of all talk about what type of clubs we can change the loft and lie. Now any club can have its loft or lie changed. Certain clubs bend easier than other clubs do. So what I've got here is a Mizuno forged wedge. Now, a forged club is a much softer material than, say, a cast club, okay? Much easier to bend. Kind of think of this material as being sort of soft and pliable. Um, a cast club is a bit more brittle stronger, harder and a bit more brittle. So cast clubs can be bent. You know, there's a lot of debate about cast clubs can't be bent. They can be bent, it's just more difficult to bend them. And sometimes if you're trying to bend the cast club in a lofted lie machine and you apply too much pressure, they can snap. So a lot of places will not bend cast clubs for you because there's a wrist they might snap. So sometimes you have to heat them up, that again causes problems because you might melt these plastic bits called the ferrules. So generally speaking, let's say for a set of ping irons, you're much better sending the ping irons back to their factory. They'll put them in a special jig and they actually hit them with a mallet um, and they bend them that way. So I tend not to bend too many cast clubs. I'll stick with the softer stainless steel heads and the forged heads, which bend very easily. So there you go but they can be done. So here comes a loft and lime machine. So what I've got here is I've got a lob wedge which is sitting a little bit too upright. Now what we mean by a club sitting too upright, again, it can be very confusing this. Ideally, a club should sit fairly flush to the deck, maybe a fraction towed up to allow for the bend in the shaft that happens as we, as we hit the shot. But let's take this to an extreme. Let's say that the club is sitting way up in the air, very, very upright. You can see how the toe is lifting off the ground. What's going to happen there is the first bit of the club to hit the ground is going to be the heel. And as the heel hits the ground, it's going to effectively close the club face, making me, for a right-handed golfer, pull the ball to the left. So I've set this club up upright. It's 65 degree lie angle. That's the way it's sitting. Now in a standard setup, this would be 63 degrees. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pop the club in the loft and lie machine. Just gonna take a little bit of time and care when you're doing lofts and lies. You know, it's quite a precision thing and you've gotta get it clamped in there in the correct spot. So I'm just positioning that in. Clamp this down, which locks the club firmly in place. So that is going nowhere. So I'm gonna put the gauge up against this, and you guys won't see this too well from where you are, but the lie of this club here at the moment is 65 degree lie angle, which is two degrees upright from standard. So I want to make this flatter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bending bar, I don't want to get hit on the head with that, would you? And I'm just going to slip this over the shaft and down onto the hosel of the club and then I'm tightening this up so it clamps on, like so. And I'm now going to apply some pressure, some leverage to bend the club back towards me. This is going to make the lie of the club flatter. Now this is where a little bit of skill and experience comes in. I'm just going to gently apply some pressure there. And I can kind of feel the club starting to bend. So you just go a little bit, it definitely move then for me, bring my gauge back over and with a huge amount of skill and expertise, <laughs> maybe more luck than judgment, that club has moved from 65 degree lie angle to 63. So that club moved two degrees flatter as I applied that pressure. And as you saw, I didn't apply a huge amount of force to that, it was just the leverage of the bar and the softness of the material which made that move. So you don't want to go in Pull in a china shot, bend that, you'll probably move it five degrees. If you apply too much pressure too quickly, you could snap the club and you don't want to snap the customer's club. So I can whiz that out. Um, oh, by the way, as you move lie, you should also check the loft. 
because as you move lies, you can change the loft of the club. As you change loft, you can change the lie of the club. So you want to make sure that you keep the loft the same. And that now, I'm standard lie angle, and that's sitting really nicely, flush to the deck, maybe a fraction tied up, and that's how I change the lie angle. Simple as that, really. So if you're using forged clubs, definitely go and get your lofts and lies checked every year because they will move around. Some people have the lies changed to suit their swing, be it an upright or a flat swing. Some people have the loft strengthened because they want to hit the ball lower. Some people add loft, hit the ball higher. You can see what it's all about. We're customizing the club to suit you. That's what it's all about. Loft and lie. Thanks for watching. Um, go and get your clubs checked if you're using the softer materials. And um, that's about all I've got to say on it, really. So thanks for watching. Uh, little subscribe button somewhere down there. Click on that and you can subscribe to my channel. Uh, it's been fun doing this little video. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with more. All the best.